Hi guys, welcome to the second part of this practical tutorial um, introduction to FXGL. And in this session, we are going to add images and we're going to add some gameplay to our game. In order to add images, you will need a directory in the resources directory called assets. Within assets, you'll need to create another directory called textures. The directory structure is standardized and is fixed, which means FXGL knows where to look for various assets. Now that we have this assets and textures directories, we can take our image. I'm going to use this PNG file called brick, and we're going to drop it inside the textures directory. So that FXGL knows where to look for that. You might also want to right click and then click rebuild because IntelliJ doesn't always copy um, resources during the first start. And now we can replace our enemy that we had from last time by commenting this out and adding view brick PNG. So you can see that it's super simple. There's no need to load it or anything, it will automatically figure out how to do this, provided that the file is located under assets and textures. So if we run the game now, we should see our enemy, which is now drawn as a brick. Let's create a new entity type, which is we are going to um, call ally. We no longer need these commented out pieces of code, so I'm going to remove them. The ally is going to move to the left. So we just switch the x axis value to minus one, so it moves to the left. And instead of loading brick as is, we're going to load it separately in here as texture, so that we're able to do some dynamic manipulation with the texture. fxgl.texture is a shorthand for loading textures. And then we can call something like multiply color. How about we multiply this by color green? And then the resultant texture is what we're going to use for the view. Now that we defined our ally, we should also spawn our ally over here somewhere. Let's spawn it at 600, 100. So it's on the right hand side and therefore it moves to the left. So now we have the same image, but in terms of actual um, end textures, they ended up different uh, being different because we multiplied by color green. So now that we have the ability to spawn these enemies and uh, um, allies dynamically, how about we get rid of these and call run to schedule a task to run every, say, every second? And then we can call fxgl spawn um, ally in a random position. To obtain a random point, you would do fxgl math dot um, random point, and then you provide the rectangle 2D for bounds, because we're saying we need a random point within these bounds. The bounds are going to be 0, 0, and then application width and application height. You can see that there are a lot of FXGL dot calls. To simplify this, you can press Alt Enter in, FX, uh, in IntelliJ, and then it will allow you to add on demand static imports, which simplifies or rather makes your code a lot more concise. 
So we can now spawn allies. And how about we spawn um, our enemy as well? So every second there will be a new ally and a new enemy spawned somewhere um, on the screen and they will obviously start calling their own component behavior which is a simple projectile component which moves um, each enemy to the right and each ally to the left. There are no win or lose conditions in this game. These are just um, examples to help you um, to demonstrate what you can do with FXGL in terms of um, simple method calls. Right, so we've added our images uh, in this session and replaced existing software generated shapes with these images. And in the next part, we are going to produce a platform specific image which has no dependencies so it bundles everything together and you're able to deploy that or rather ship that to other users who are able to run your game without the need to install um, java runtime thanks for watching